Cronkite Sports Live. I'm Jack Harris. And that familiar face to my left is Spencer Harderberg. Spencer, how are you doing today? Pretty great. Thank you very much, Jack. It's great to be back here with you. But speaking of more important familiar faces, another familiar face that will be sticking around in Tempe is ASU's athletic director, Ray Anderson. Anderson just signed a con contract extension that will carry through 2022 at an annual salary of $800,000. That puts him at the third highest paid athletic director in the Pac-12, behind UCLA's Dan Guerrero and Oregon State's Scott Barnes. Anderson's hiring of 17 coaches in his tenure, including high-profile names such as Herm Edwards, Bobby Hurley, and Tracy Smith, has earned Anderson this extension. After Alex Marsh's strong eight-inning start, last Friday led ASU to a 5-1 win against USC. The Sun Devils have dropped the three games since. It started with losses in the final two games of their series against the Trojans, suffering from several defensive mistakes in 10-1 and 8-4 losses. On Tuesday, the Sun Devils went to Las Vegas to face UNLV, but got in early trouble after starter Brady Corrigan failed to get out of the opening inning and an eventual 14-6 defeat. It wasn't all bad news for ASU, though. As freshman Spencer Torkelson and junior Gage Canning were named to the Golden Spikes Award midseason watch list. Both of the sluggers homered in ASU's game against the Rebels. This weekend, the Sun Devils head to Northern California to face number two Stanford for a three-game series, and our own WCSN reporter Nick Batters is in Palo Alto to cover the series and joins us now over the phone. Nick, ASU entered this weekend with a 14-19 record. They've lost 9-12 of 12 since sweeping Oregon last month, that open Pac-12 play. In your estimation, why are the Sun Devils struggling so much lately? Yeah, no, you bring up a good point. ASU, they've really been struggling since that Oregon series, and it's been for a couple of reasons. One of them, they haven't been able to win one-run ball games. They lost two games by just one run to Washington State, and in both of the games that they had against Cal State Bullerton, they lost both of those by just one, two, and all of those games, the losses came in the late innings, so it was a close game throughout. ASU, they can't get the close victory. But the other thing is that the pitching staff's just been really inconsistent. The bullpen hasn't been looking too sharp, and neither, frankly, is the starting rotation. And Sam Romero's been struggling in the Friday night role, and then Eli Langlis has been experiencing some struggles lately. So from top to bottom, pitching isn't looking good. And honestly, to add on to it, the defense hasn't been looking that great either. Well, this weekend they're facing the number two team in the country in the Cardinal. What makes Stanford so good, and who should we keep an eye out on their roster? Yeah, you mentioned it. They're number two in the country, and it's for good reason, too. They've been in the top three for the last five weeks. It's really, really, really phenomenal. But after winning the first ten games, they have not at all cooled off. The starting rotation has been really good. Brendan Beck and Chris Bubik have been lights out this season. Bubik, he was named to the Golden Spikes Award midseason watch list, along with ASU Spencer Torkelson and Gage Canyon. But not only that, but their closer, Jack Little, he's been unreal. He's thrown 21 scoreless innings, has 10 saves. He's fourth in the nation and first in the Pac-12 in, in that save category. He's allowed just 12 base runners all season. And like I said, he hasn't allowed a run. The pitching's been good. The hitting's been good. They have five guys hitting over 280. But honestly, I'd say it just circles right back around to the pitching. First in the Pac-12 in ERA and opponents batting average. And they lead the nation in whip as a team, which is just absolutely unreal. Those are the three categories you want to be near the top of the leaderboards in. And they're near the top of the leaderboards for all of them. Yeah, a tough opponent for sure. Does ASU have a chance of winning a game this weekend? And if so, what do they need to do in order to be successful? I don't think it's safe to say that there's any game this year that ASU cannot win, even games against good teams like Stanford and Oregon State, because at times this season, this team has shown flashes of being a complete ball club. They've shown that they can play defense well. They've shown that they can have really consistent pitching and good consistent pitching too. And they've certainly shown it with the match. Gage Cannon, Lyle Lynn, Connor Aldrete, Spencer Torkelson, they've all been having good seasons. But in order for ASU to stand a chance to get the standard, they have to put everything together for one ball game. And that's been the area that they've really had the most issues with this season. They haven't been able to hit well, pitch well, and play good defense really since that Oregon series that opened a Pac-12 play. So if they can do all those three things, I think they have a shot at winning a game. Is that realistic? I'm not sure. We're going to have to wait and see, but certainly don't rule it out. Be sure to follow along with Nick's coverage of the series at CronkiteSports.com. Nick, safe travels. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Best of luck with the rest of the show, guys. Now let's run it on over to the track and talk a little men's and women's track and field. For that, we welcome in WCSN track and field analyst Quinn Jamison. Quinn, thanks for being here today. Glad to be here. Now let's jump right into it. Maggie Ewan had an all-time monster performance this past weekend at the Sun Angel Classic. Give us a little recap on that. 
And it, re it really was remarkable because Ewan's performance did come on senior night. This was her last meet as an Arizona State Sun Devil at home in Tempe. And she had a remarkable performance. She competed in the hammer throw, the discus, and the shot put. She set NCAA leading marks in each of the three events. And in the hammer throw, she set the collegiate record throwing over 74 meters. That is quite a ways. And then in the shot put, she also set the second all-time NCAA mark, along with a personal best and a school record. It was a monster day for her. And catching up with her after the meet, it was really interesting. She really she wants to focus on just improving upon her marks for the rest of the year. She's not focused on the accolades. She was the USA TFCCA, that's a mouthful, and Pac-12 <laughs> Pac ath Track and Field Athlete of the Week. But she was really just, she wants to focus on getting better and continuing to improve upon her p personal marks. But head coach Greg Kraft did call the performance the greatest performance by a thrower in NCAA history. So it was, it was a big day for her. Definitely an all-time performance for Ewan. Now, if she's focusing on the team, let's focus on the team as well. As a whole, what does this 13th-ranked team have to do to not only compete in conference play, but nationally as well? And for this, this 13th-ranked Sun Devils women's team, Maggie Ewan obviously is the catalyst. She's the leader of this squad. And last year at the NCAA Championships, they finished 10th with Maggie Ewan scoring every single point. So she can carry this team alone. But this year, Coach Kraft and the Sun Devils have a couple other athletes that, are gonna, that have stepped up for them. The biggest being Alfio Elise Moraro. Moraro is a graduate transfer from Indiana State University and a former All-American in the 800 meters. And so for the Sun Devils, she's just had incredible versatility. She's competed in events, ra events ranging from the four by 100 meters all the way up to the 800 meters. And that kind of versatility is very rare, especially at the collegiate level. And she's just excelled in all of them. In the 800, she's ranked eighth nationally. And in the 400, seventh in the highly competitive West region. Moving past her, I would say the sprint relays for the women really need to step up in this last month or so of the season if they want to compete on a national level. Moraro is a, she runs a leg on both the 4x1 and 4x4, but those, those times need to steadily come down here in the last month if they want to add points for uh, Ewan and the Sun Devils. Definitely. Now, for as good as the women have been, the men have certainly not matched them. What's been the men's biggest problem this year? And the biggest problem for the men has just been lack of depth. Mm -hmm. Injuries have hurt them a little bit, and they just don't have the same, the same kind of roster that this women's team does. I would highlight the pole vaulters for the men. Cole Riddle and Nathan Height are two athletes to watch for the rest of the season. Height is a senior. Riddle is a freshman. Riddle is the Arizona State High School record holder in the pole vault. And in his first meet as a Sun Devil, at the Sun Angel Classic last week, he came in fourth and has already moved himself as, into the number one spot in the region with Haight, who's a senior. He's in third in the region. They're, uh, they're going to get some points for the Sun Devils men's team. Now, this next month will be big for them before the Pac-12 championships. What do you see down the road for them before the championships start? It is. This is a huge month, and uh, Coach Kraft emphasized that. He said this is the month where they really just need to start putting the pieces together. There's not as much time left as there was earlier. They just really need to start um, start hitting some times, especially on the relays. They'll be in Southern California this weekend. They have the uh, San Diego State Triton Invitational. They'll stay in California for a couple weeks. Mount Sac Relays, Brian Clay Invitational before headed back down to Tucson. Um, and then in about a month's time, they'll be... Uh, Pac-12 championships, May 12th, 13th, followed by the West Regionals and then the NCAA Finals. Keep up with all of this coverage on CronkiteSports.com. Quinn, thank you very much. Always a pleasure, Spencer. Somehow, Juarez's is left arm didn't fall off last weekend. The ASU softball ace threw 20 innings in two games at Oregon State last Friday and Sunday. In the latter, Juarez pitched all 15 frames of an extra inning thriller. The Sun Devils won both of her starts against the Beavers to take the series in Corvallis and improve to 33-5 on the season. This week, ASU is ranked number 7 in the country and finds itself in the thick of the postseason hunt as it prepares for upcoming Pac-12 series against Oregon and Arizona. It's really exciting because, I mean, the Pac is back and it's really exciting because every series we play is a big one. It doesn't matter who it is or what they're ranked or anything, like every series in the Pac is huge. So. Um, it's super exciting, especially because this year they're all both at home, so we have our crowd and our atmosphere, so it's really nice. They're gritty. Uh, we are too. I mean, I think we can hang with anyone, and I think um, it, it, the ball can out fall either way, so I think just playing our game and um, not worrying about them and not worrying about if they get a big hit, okay, we can get big hits too, and it's just 
letting the ball fall where it may and giving it all our all. It's like a big deal and like Fresno State we didn't really have like a rivalry against anybody specific. I mean you have your teams that you usually butt heads with and that's I guess it was San Diego State for us but like they take it serious. There was like a um I think we went and sat down at like a cohort or like some type of meeting and they talked about like the history of the rivalry and I was like oh my god like I didn't realize it was this serious, but I'm excited. The girls, a lot of the favorite softball memories are beating U of A at U of A last year. So, And they say that like a lot of people come to these games, so it's just, I'm excited. Well, I know I haven't been to the gym in a while, so let's pretend I am and talk a little ASU gymnastics. For that, we welcome in WCSN gymnastics analyst Tyler Mannion. Tyler, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Spencer. So, uh, Jim Devils, they finished last in the Pac-12 last season. How do you think they did this season, especially compared to that? Well, I think, the, you know, they really shattered expectations last year. They didn't do very well, as you said. And this year, they came in preseason ranked 31 in the country. Then they went into the season, they actually were ranked in the top 20 every, re every week during the season. And then they got into postseason play, got to those Pac-12 championships, and actually got their highest place since 2012. They finished sixth. So I think they did really well, and I think they should be happy with their season so far. Now, freshman Cairo Leonard Baker has been a huge cog in this team. What is so special about this freshman? Well, you know, she's got all the athleticism you're looking for. She does focus on all those details that head coach Jay Santos talks about, which leads her to getting all the accolades you're going to see on this graphic right here. You know, she's Pac-12 freshman of the year. She's second team all Pac-12 in all around and bars. All these great things, but what really drives her, Spencer, interestingly enough, it's her relationship with her mom. Now, when I talked to both of them, they actually both teared up when talking about the relationship they have, that bond they have, that love between them. And, you know, uh, Cairo's mom comes to every home meet. She's even at the Pac-12 championships. She's always the loudest fan supporting her daughter. And Cairo told me that her mom is what drives her, and that's what I think sets her above the rest of the pack. Definitely it gives you goosebumps. That is such a good basis for any athlete to have. Now, this team is such a young nucleus. We, we mentioned they only have one senior. How do you think they'll do going forward into next season? Yes, yeah, so as you mentioned, that one senior, she's Nichelle Christofferson. She's graduating. Everyone else is returning. So you have someone going to nationals like Kyra Leonard Baker coming back. Still has three more seasons left. And Coom, the former French Olympian, is coming back. Jay Santos is only going to be in his third season. So I really think this team is going nowhere but up. Great things coming from this team. And... No, I wouldn't be surprised if they finish top four in the Pac-12 next year. Future as bright as ever for the Gym Devils. Thank you very much, Tyler. Thanks for having me, Spencer. Now, you want to know what men's tennis and ice cream have in common? They both look better and better as summer approaches. I mean, I probably shouldn't say that. Ice cream always looks pretty good to me. But men's tennis really hasn't. A three-loss skate to start the season left some people wondering if this team was ready for the D1 life. They proved quickly that they are and are now a 33 team in the nation, standing at 13 and 7. The Devils have just three games left, all in beautiful Tempe, against number two UCLA, number 16 USC, and Arizona before the Pac-12 championships start on April 25th in Ojai, California. Gotta love a good ice cream simile. Uh, five grueling weeks of ASU spring football are in the books, and Alex Gall joins us now to break down more. So Alex, a new coaching staff, obviously. Herm Edwards comes in. A lot of new players stepping up in the depth chart. How has the culture changed in your eyes this spring? Well, I think it just starts with Herm Edwards. I mean, I think we could both agree, Jack, that Herm Edwards is a very different coach than Todd Graham. And not many Pac-12 coaches, not many coaches in general, would light a fire, like you said, under his players and say straight out that he's not unwilling to cut scholarship players. So saying that has really changed the atmosphere in Tempe, and it's really made it more competitive in spring practices. Yeah, a lot has happened this spring, but if you were to give me one surprise, what would it be? Well, I have to say, the running back battle has been very interesting to watch. Eno Benjamin is the returner to this team from last season, but the thing that surprised them, and Eno Benjamin has gone out with an injury, the team that's surprised, is Trelon Smith has come in and has been taking first-team reps over the course of these last three or four weeks in spring practice. So he's really impressed, I think, and I think he's really put himself into this conversation as the season moves forward in the fall.
Yeah, spring game tonight, 7 p.m. What are you going to be keeping your eye on? Well, any team starts and goes with their quarterback. Manny Wilkins had an inconsistent 2017 campaign. And if ASU wants to move forward with this team, they're going to need more consistency out of him. We've seen him in spring practices make bombs all the way down the field, 30, 40 yards. We've also seen him struggle in the late down situations, third, fourth down, not being able, not being able to make complete passes on those downs. So for ASU, if they want to get a pair and want to move forward with their team, they need a player, their quarterback, Manny Wilkins, to pass for better stats than he did last season. Yeah, we'll be sure to keep an eye out for all of the content coming from the football coverage team at CronkiteSports.com, including this special piece from Scotty Gange this week, who takes a look deep into ASU's history through the eyes of a former player and two lifelong fans. <laughs> had stamina then. Don't have that anymore. <laughs> Got fake knees a whole nine yards. So. <laughs> Meet Bill Chun and Steve Turkovich, two of Arizona State football's most faithful, loyal, and longest fans. Both graduates of Arizona State, Chun has been a season ticket holder since 1980, and Turkovich since 1965. Because you cut me, I believe, maroon and gold, and always comes to all, all the practices during the game time, and so then the Hillman Tunnel, I'm down on a football field, and I'm really into it, I love it. Play catch with him, don't be fancy. Turkovich's 53 years as a fan is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, that's what you do, you play catch. Don't get fancy. His life as a Sun Devil began with a recruitment from legendary head football coach, Frank Cush. Uh, in 1960, the Cush took 12 freshmen up to Camp Arizona, and we were up there for 17 days. Once you look around, there's 47 of you. He says, you'd be lucky if there's a dozen of you guys left. Everybody looked around and said, oh my God. Four years later, 12 of us made it. As Turkovich was a natural running back at ASU, he was also able to find a strong fit on the defensive side, and one that he says has a strong correlation to that position of a Sun Devil legend. We had a monster man, which is basically what Pat Tillman ran. And because I like to hit people and I was fast and stuff, I was small, but I was quick. So they pushed me, me the monster man. Now, most Pac-12 schools have a specific hand symbol. Fight on for USC, forks up for Arizona State, and the Wildcat for Arizona. But Steve Turkovich has a different take on it. We cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Reflecting on some of their fond Sun Devil memories, both Chun and Turkovich regarded the 1987 Rose Bowl as one of their favorites and one that they will truly never forget. The Rose Bowl was the most magical thing that I ever was involved in. And my wife and I went and we partied and we met people and we hung out with ASU folks and we screamed and hollered. <laughs> it was great. Oh yeah. Of being a part of the program for as long as they have, the two have seen their fair share of coaches come to Tempe. And when asked about new head coach Herm Edwards, they spoke very highly on him and his new culture that he has brought to the Bill Kajikawa practice fields. I think we're headed for something we haven't seen here for a while. I don't have the stress. The stress is not there. With the annual spring football game taking place this Friday night, you can bet that both Steve Turkovich and Bill Chun will be there watching on their alma mater, reflecting on some great times, and of course, sharing some laughs as well. From Tempe, Scotty Gange, Cronkite Sports. <laughs> yeah, definitely an awesome story right there. And now, lo and behold, we get to welcome Scotty into studio to catch us up on the week that was in social media. Scotty, must have been a busy uh, past couple days for you. Pretty busy, but it's always a good time talking to those guys. They're super, super entertaining and, and just nice guys to talk with. Yeah, they certainly look like it. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right into the tweets, you guys. I think. We have a couple twists today, so it should be a pretty good time. Oh, all right, all right. I like twists. I all like right. twists. 
So the first one comes from the Arizona State baseball team. It's foul pole sports. That's Miles Denson out there in right field. Nobody came to help him warm up, so he said, <laughs> eh, I'll just do it myself, tossing it back and forth to himself. I mean, nobody really helped him out. He was kind of at a loss there. But the best part comes in what Miles Denson had to say about it on the world of Twitter. So going in, Miles Denson, correction. I'm not saying I'm the content that America wants or even what it needs, but I certainly am content. I don't know about you guys, but I, I want that content. I like it. What, do, you, do you guys need that content? I do. I, I can certainly relate to Miles here. Yes, I need that content. This reminds me of when we rehearsed for this show, and, I, and I'll go and sit in a Starbucks and just talk to myself for 20 minutes. So, Miles, I, I feel you, man. Yeah, I'll just I'll pretend to be Jack just all day going going through his script. <laughs> Don't do it as good as me though. I think so. I read it a little yeah. bit better than you uh -huh. do too, which uh -huh. is pretty. Uh, yeah, sure. uh, it says says a lot. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, <laughs> roll from the diamond. We're gonna go over to football now, and I'm gonna need your help. It's a bit of a theatrical read, and so okay. once you'll see yeah. as it comes up, we're all gonna be playing parts here. So I'll be the preface and Manny. Jack, I want you to be Herm. Yes. Spencer, I want you to be Fan. Comes from okay. Jordan K. So a fan just caught a Brandon Ruiz field goal. I like it. Do you have any eligibility left? Oh, yeah. How many years? Four. Yeah, but can you do it with someone coming at you? Oh, how big is he? Yeah, I didn't think so. And right there, that, that shows. I think, I think we killed that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, was, that was good. That was good. That was good. Thank, yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. That's, uh -huh. that's sure. some theatrical here. But, <laughs> I mean, you play to win the game, Scott. Yeah, that's all exactly. I got to say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, the fan had his, had his shining moment, and obviously he wasn't able to take care of it. What do you say when Herm asked you? I mean, he, he just got discovered right there. You got to yeah, take advantage I, I of that, right? Say, That's a scholarship. Yeah, yeah. 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 Slipping slip through his fingers. Shoot or shoot, go for your spot on the team. Doesn't matter how big he is. Yeah, exactly. Miss, exactly. Definite missed opportunity there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so with the with the theme of football being the spring football game tonight, we're going to stay over at the Bill Kajikawa practice field. And this one is coming from Coach John Ray Simon Jr. Student athletes, coaches always be Ooh. doing talking. Show me, mm. Coach. And Coach, <laughs> the, the running back coach right there, he shows them. The behind the back snag. Look at that. That's oh, just damn, absolutely right. Pretty. Look at him go. I mean, one more time. We'll see it. Going to catch it. Oh, behind the back, swoop it. And so the the athletes are saying that coaches do all the talking, and he showed it. And so you guys, we do a lot of talking over here in CSL. Oh boy. So it's time uh, for us to show look it. Look at this. And so okay. Spencer, I'm gonna I'm oh, gonna boy, nominate yeah. you here. We're, we do lots of sports talking. So it's, am I doing what you just did? Oh yeah. It's time for oh, you geez. to <laughs> represent all of WCSN <laughs> and show everybody that we can talk it, but we can also right. walk it. So right. you're maybe back in my head. Behind the back pass. Right, I hope so we're ready for this. And I'm going to toss it up. Are you right, ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh, yes! Oh, we got it. All right. We all got right. it. See, so if Herm we does talk come it, up, yeah, we it. If Herm, yeah, I, I mean, I trapped it on my back. It wasn't a clean there catch, but it's a catch nonetheless. With the with the NFL's rules, we, never, we don't know what a catch when is. When Herm but, comes yeah. up to you at practice, you can say, Herm, I catch yeah. a ball behind my back. Put me on the team. We'll, we'll at Herm Edwards. We'll clip it. We'll show him. Spencer, I think you might have just got a scholarship. I think I might have. I think I might have. Thank you, guys. This yep. is a big, big moment for me. All right. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks for, thanks for playing along. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you very much, Scotty. And now let's head over to Jake Santo in this week's Impact. Thanks, Spencer. The Arizona State softball team continued their dominance once again this weekend, taking another two wins at Oregon State. The Devils have surprised many with their consistent command, so let's take a closer look at the Sun Devils matchups in the coming weeks. The Oregon Ducks roll into Tempe as the third-ranked team in the nation. The Ducks are coming off an impressive weekend, sweeping the Arizona Wildcats in Tucson, led by their dominant pitching staff. This season, Miranda Elish and Megan Kleiss each have an ERA under one with 13 and 12 wins, respectively. Offensively, Senior Gwen Speckis has racked up 11 home runs and 38 RBIs through 38 games started. After this weekend, the Sun Devils welcome in in-state rival in 12th rank, the Arizona Wildcats. The Wildcats have a successful season of their own with a current record of 27-9. Taylor McKellen has been the ace of the Wildcats pitching staff with a 17-6 record in 18 complete games. The Wildcats have swept the likes of California and beaten the top 10 ranked Oklahoma, a team the Sun Devils lost to early earlier in the season. ASU will have the advantage of playing these two upcoming series at home in Farrington Stadium in front of their home fans. If the Sun Devils will look to continue the run at a potential College World Series appearance. ASU will need to take care of business against these two teams in the next two weeks. Back to you guys at the desk. Now let's get into my personal favorite segment, the way it is, the way it works. We got three questions. We might agree, we might disagree. We'll do a little banter. And the producers pick who was the smartest. Sounds good. Yeah. Basically. So, Let's talk Ray Anderson. He was just given a three-year contract, like I mentioned, an, an extension. Um, now, how would you grade his performance through his tenure? Do you think he deserved this extension? This is a, this is a big question. I, I'd have to say, though, a, a C plus. Look, football and basketball have been good, but look, baseball, they've been struggling a little bit lately. I know that that has some fans 
a little bit uneasy right now. So I'll say C plus, but a lot of it's gonna come down to uh, to how the football team does with Herm Edwards. See, I put him a little bit higher than that. I, I don't wanna go up to B plus, but I'll, I'll give him a B. I think he hired definitely some high profile names. Bobby Hurley, legendary college basketball player, got him as a coach at ASU, which isn't a you know, stereotypical basketball school. And then getting someone like Herm Edwards, another high profile name, which can definitely attract a lot of young talent from high school. I'll give him a B, B plus, right, 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 right in that range. Yeah, fair enough. And speaking of football, spring game tonight, spring wrapping up now, but what has you excited for the fall? Seeing the spring practices, it's the defense. It has, right, been, right. it has been very, very interesting. The energy is just so different. Um, I remember the coaches were saying, I don't know if this is how you guys did this last year, but this is how we're doing it this year. Because <laughs> they have to run to every single ball after the play. The energy is different, just the whole atmosphere. I think defense will be much improved. I'm excited for Herm Edwards' weekly press conferences. I mean, you, you <laughs> saw too, what he too. gave us in the NFL. I cannot wait to see what we get from, from college from Edwards, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, uh, ASU grad James Harden, you might have heard of him probably going to be the MVP. Beard. He is leading the Rockets into the NBA playoffs, and also we got NHL playoffs going on. So, Jack, are you an NHL playoffs oh. or NBA playoffs kind of guy? Stanley N Cup? NHL all the way. Like okay. Three things. It's more unpredictable. They get to fight each other, and, and the Stanley Cup itself is the best trophy in sports, bar none. It's not like a basketball, like, kind of falling off a, a trophy stand. I don't know. NHL all the way, by far the best tournament. I think it's a pretty cool trophy, the finals trophy. But yeah. I think beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I know that you're a hockey guy. I know, uh -huh. that, I know that I'm a basketball guy. I'm going NBA playoffs, especially this year I think it'll be very interesting you see there are a lot of injuries a lot of a lot of open openings in both conferences for a different team besides just the Cavs and the Warriors like we've That's seen true, for the last true. 30 years so it'll be it'll, it'll be it'll be nice I think it'll be a really interesting playoffs yeah okay well we'll see who, who wins those and we'll see who wins this week's the way it is uh, definitely a lot of competition yeah I just want them to not take the behind the back uh, catch into account see better answers they didn't. I win it was still a nice catch better though. luck next time <laughs> let's go back to 1963 Martin Luther King delivered his I Have a Dream speech, Bill Russell won his sixth NBA championship, and Loyola Chicago went to the Final Four the first time. It was also the first time ASU baseball accomplished a 30-win season. 55 years later, the Sun Devils are in danger of falling short of the 30-win mark in consecutive seasons for the first time since. There are a lot of reasons ASU is floundering again this spring, yet no easy indication of where or how the historical program will turn things around. Only one thing is for sure. ASU baseball is better than this. 30 wins should be the absolute bare minimum, not a total that appears increasingly unattainable by the middle of April. Fact is, no excuse can make up for the disastrous last two years, which have been quite possibly the worst two seasons of baseball the program has ever seen. And that's the way it is. Now let's get into top plays number three. I really want to be enthusiastic, but I can't because it's golf, so John Rom. Steps up to the steps up to the ball outside the hole, ASU alum. And he takes the chip shot. And it's coming in. Oh, and this one looks good. This one looks good. Drop, 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 drop. And click! Right in the hole. Excellent chip from John Rahm at the Masters. I think we should have shown him smashing his uh, club. Uh, I was, was going to say cue the golf clap. Uh, but yeah, we will yeah. run we'll, it to we'll, number we'll, we'll two now. We'll ASU baseball, they might be struggling for wins. One thing they're not struggling for, power. Sunday against USC. Three home runs from the Sun Devils, Carter Aldretti, Gage Workman, and who else but Spencer Torkelson. This guy continues to do it. He's already eclipsed Barry Bonds' home run record, sends this one out to left field. He could be going for the all-time school record this season. ASU, though, they did not win on Sunday. They lose to USC 8-4. They have lost three in a row going into Stanford this weekend. Spencer Torkelson, best name on the team. Wonder why. And now let's get into number one, Maggie Ewan. Absolutely breathtaking performance. I don't even have words, but I'll try. Shot put discus hammer throw. She set the NBA lead, NCAA lead for all three. NCAA record for hammer throw. Second all time in discus. And shot put and hammer throw world leading. World leading. Let let that sink in for a second. All I can hope is that this has been a world leading show. Really. I, 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 I hope that's so. where the bar should be set for this week and moving forward. Spence, as always, great time. Love it's anchoring with you. We'll be back next Friday to keep you updated on everything ASU athletics. Thanks for tuning in.